Today's match is in the books, and now it's time to break it down. Welcome to Cougar Postmatch Live. Postmatch coverage of BYU women's soccer is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Sagicor Life Insurance Company, wise financial thinking for life. Smith's, low prices, market fresh at Smith's. Wilner and O'Reilly, immigration solutions in Utah and abroad at wilneroreilly.com. And by Zions Bank, we haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Now, let's get you back to your host, Jason Shepard. Tough night for BYU women's soccer. Their season comes to an end against the TCU Horn Frogs in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Two to one, the final score. TCU will advance on. Still don't know who they're going to play. Texas A&M, North Texas, still scoreless in the 87th minute. BYU huddling up in front of their bench on the far side of the pitch. Coach Rockwood talking to her team. Certainly a great accomplishment to get back to the NCAA tournament, Avery. Not the result you wanted. I, I think this was certainly a good matchup for BYU. It's, it's a shame that it ended this way. Absolutely. I think it's important to note, like you said, it was a great season, and we've heard time and time again that the BYU Cougars 2018 team had goals to, one, win conference, and two, make the tournament. And that's what we've seen this season. This team is so young. There's one senior. And most you know, coaches and onlookers would say that this is a building year. But with BYU, they've shown that this isn't, this hasn't been a building year. They came back, put themselves at the top of the conference, went into the tournament, ranked 25, beat a number six team like Santa Clara at home. And, you know, a couple of defensive mistakes led to a few goals for TCU that we, we haven't seen goals like that being given up by BYU. And so ultimately, I feel like this is a really positive season for BYU. And, you know, this result, yeah, it's it's not the one we came hungry for, but at the end of the day, they accomplished their goals this year. Cougars falling 2-1. to one. That means the final record for BYU this year, 13-5-1. They did return to the NCAA tournament, which is certainly where this team belongs. Long history of going to the NCAA is unfortunately ending in the first round. Let's get to our post-game stats brought to you by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh. At Smith's, when you look at the shots, BYU doubled up TCU, 16-8. to Here's where it was a little more even. Shots on goal, BYU only had a two-shot advantage. It was 7-5. to Certainly TCU was much more efficient with their shots. When they took their shots, they were usually in position to do something with them. Absolutely. We've seen a few teams like that. Portland was one of them. We did beat Portland in the WCC, but they had very few shots. But when they did shoot, it typically was a goal. And those high percentage shot to goal ratio teams often go far because when you get to a certain point in the tournament, all the teams are very high caliber. They can all score as soon as their mistake made. There is a mistake made from the other team. And that's what DCU did today. They, they came and they handled BYU's press from the beginning, led in a goal, but then in the second half was able to capitalize on the chances that BYU was willing to give them. Looking at some other stats, 6-3 to three saves in favor of TCU, 10-7 to seven, TCU with three more fouls. BYU dominated the corner kick 7-1 to one in favor of BYU, two offside calls, one for TCU. BYU got on the board, led after 45, Elise Flake scoring in the 23rd minute to give BYU the lead. But the second half, and it was a little, it was really the opposite of what we expected. The second half has usually been BYU's half. They're the team that has come out more aggressive. But really the first 10 to 15 minutes, it was all TCU. And that's when they scored their two goals. They had one from Messiah Bright and another from Yasmeen Ryan. And that was, that was all TCU needed. Tough way to end a season, but you're exactly right. They have spent all season weathering the storm in the first half and then really becoming a team in the second half. And this and tonight we just saw a little bit of the opposite. They they focused on the first half. They did a great job. The second half, I don't know what it was, but there just really wasn't a lot of possession from BYU. Lizzie Braby and Maddie Gates led the Cougars, each with three shots. Lizzie with one shot on goal. Maddie with one shot on goal. Elise Flake, 
two shots, two shots on goal, and obviously the lone goal for BYU. Cameron Tucker joining us now here at our broadcast location. Cameron, first and foremost, thank you very much for taking the time. I know it's it's difficult to do these after a loss. Maybe just your, your overall impressions on, on the game tonight. Um, it's really disappointing. Um, we definitely came out and we were playing so good in the first half. Um, um, I think just come, going into the second half, we kind of came off to a slow start. And once they, after they got their first goal, we kind of didn't bounce back like we should have. But overall, I think we played good. But... We definitely could have been better, but we're just using this to motivate us for next year. So, It's it's certainly not the way you want to end it, but getting back to the NCAA tournament, that was such a big goal of this team. Yeah. So when you look big picture, getting back to this point, how do you view the season? Um, definitely, like, we made a goal next, last year that we were going to make it to the NCAA tournament and that we were going to win conference. So we are achieving our goals good, but I think next year we're just going to take it a step further, making it. We went to conference again, coming back and going farther. So, I think it's important to note that your team is so young. I mean, you have one senior. Half of your team hasn't been to the NCAA tournament before. They don't know what it's like to be a leader in conference all season long. So as an upperclassman going into next year, I think it's really important for you to remember that you guys had an amazing season, and this is totally a comeback season that a lot of people thought because of the the age of the team the young players that this was supposed to be a building year and you yeah. guys you guys did not look like a building year at yeah. all this was this one this was a great team tell us a little bit more give us a little bit more detail about you know the in and out of the off season and the summertime and the fall and what led to this and what you guys are going to implement next year going into you know setting higher goals yeah so we definitely Sid was a great captain and um after last year ended we sat down and we made sure that we had made goals just preseason every time we were doing the beep test or whatever we were just saying this is one step closer to winning the conference this is one step closer to going further so i think just we we made we did our goals good but we're excited for next year to keep going so you mentioned that after they scored the first goal it tied things up um it happened really fast yeah. where they got the second goal. That's usually the MO of BYU. Yeah. As soon as you score, you score again, and you really put pressure. What were they doing differently to start the second half that maybe they weren't doing in the first half? Um, like the other team? Yeah, TCU. Um, I don't know. I think just even when we're down 1-0 at half, like you go into the locker room, you have a huge pep talk, like, you got this, we got to come back. And I think TCU did a really good job of that. They were right on us. Like, I think they adjusted their formation. formation. They didn't, weren't leaving Kayla as much space. So I think they really adjusted well to us, and we did good too. So, What was the message from Coach Rockwood and the coaches when you guys we saw you guys huddling up, as you do after every yeah. game? What was the message from the coaches to you guys? Uh, just to let this motivate us. Just next year, just we, we got to this point, but to remember this, we didn't want to go out like this. So just to remember this and use it to motivate us for next year. Cameron, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on a, on a really good season and really looking forward to next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Cameron Tucker. BYU falls 2-1 to one in the first round of the NCAA tournament. TCU moving on. They'll face the winner of North Texas and Texas A&M. And by the way, that game going to overtime 0-0 after 90 minutes. We'll take a break, and we're hoping to hear from the head coach of the Cougars. With the NCAA being in charge of this, uh, the coaches have to do some uh, – press before they're available to us so we're hoping to be able to talk with coach rockwood coming up on the other side byu falls two to one to tcu we'll have more of byu women's soccer coming up next on the new skin byu sports network welcome back to cougar post match live on the new skin byu sports network for the final word on today's match let's rejoin jason shepherd Welcome back to Garvey Rosenthal Stadium on the campus of TCU. BYU falling to the Horn Frogs 2 to 1. Their season comes to an end. Final record for BYU 13-5 and 1. They did wrap up West Coast Conference play as the outright champions at 8 and 1. Let's quickly pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We're waiting to here from the head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. As I mentioned before we went to break, uh, there are media responsibilities because this is governed by the NCAA right now that she has to go uh, and speak to the uh, the press first, uh, but then she'll have uh, an opportunity to come up to our broadcast location 
and talk with us. Let's update you on other action going on in college women's soccer. The game that both of these teams, now mostly TCU paying attention to, is Texas A&M and North Texas still scoreless in overtime there in the 93rd minute. Other games going on right now, also in overtime, Kansas and St. Louis uh, are tied at one apiece, 97th minute for them. Number two, UCLA leading San Jose State in the 49th minute, four to nothing. Bruins pouring it on early. Also, Arizona, who a lot of people thought BYU may actually face in the first round. Uh, Arizona leading Denver one to nothing. That uh, match in the 53rd minute. Finals from earlier today was Minnesota defeating Auburn two to nothing. Number four USC six nothing over Long Beach State. Lipscomb defeating Mississippi State in double overtime one to nothing. Hofstra over number four Boston College an upset there four to one. Number two Tennessee doubling up Louisville two to one. Penn State on top of Bowling Green four to one. Number three South Carolina or third seeded South Carolina two better than UNC Greensboro three to one. Uh, fourth seed Duke one nothing over Rutgers. NC State defeating Northwestern one to nothing. One nothing also is number one seed Florida State on top of Loyola Chicago. Texas Tech defeats Princeton three to nothing. Third seed Virginia two nothing over Monmouth. Wake Forest one nothing over Ohio State in OT. Arkansas five to one over Little Rock. Three nothing is the final. Wisconsin defeating the Memphis Tigers and then Virginia Tech. Upsetting four seed Texas one to nothing. Earlier tonight at the Marriott Center, opening night for BYU women's basketball. They went to overtime and they get the victory over UC Riverside by a final score of seventy two to seventy. Brenda Chase with eighteen points, Paisley Johnson with eighteen points, Shaylee Gonzalez with sixteen, Maria Albiero with ten, as they paced BYU to the overtime two point win to start the season one and zero. Oh. It's not the only BYU game at the Marriott Center, Avery. Uh, It was a doubleheader. The women played first, men played second. The men are on the court right now taking on UVU, and the Wolverines have a five-point lead early on at the Marriott Center, 14-54 to go in the first half, 9-4 the score in favor of the team four miles away from the BYU campus. Hey, in case you're wondering, big game at the uh, Vivint Smart Home Arena tonight, the Utah Jazz, welcoming back Gordon Hayward. Boston Celtics in town. Since we were on the air, didn't get to see how many boos there were, how loud it was. But the Celtics right now with a three-point lead at 36-33, leading the Utah Jazz. And by the way, Gordon Hayward with two points so far in his return. Uh, Joe Ingles leading the way, seven points for the Jazz. All right, Avery, back to our match tonight. BYU season comes to an end. What are some of the takeaways you'll have when you think back on this two 2018 version of BYU women's soccer a couple of things I'll always remember is the the last minute goal um, that McKaylee Moore had in the first half of San Francisco (laughs) seeing a player come off the bench like that and make such a splash with her team in conference just really shows uh how how resilient college athletes are to not be a starter but to be as effective as one going forward is is sometimes just a mental game to know you're just as valuable even though you're not put on that starting lineup and um, as much as that story is only about McKaylee that really is the definition of a BYU soccer player there's pretty early in the season there's usually a starting lineup established and it it's maintained throughout the season and as a bench player and a sub you you have to step into that role and assist your team in any way that you can and this team has has really come into their own as far as they aren't really playing in the shadow of any other any other BYU team. They're young and yet they play like a mature, well seasoned veteran team and that's gonna that's gonna be really exciting going forward in the next couple of years as these younger classmen become upperclassmen. Well, I'm just I'm just excited to see where they go. Well and you've mentioned the youth a couple of times and how we knew that there was one senior Maddie Sidaway Gates was BYU's lone senior. So the majority of this team will come back. They will have had those that hadn't had experience in the postseason now have experience. So this is a team that certainly will come back intact with a few additions, I'm sure. It always is the case with college athletics. Looking to to prove something and to take it one step further. The future is certainly bright for BYU women's soccer. Absolutely. We're also going to have a couple of subtractions. You know, Olivia Wade's going to serve a mission, and that's exciting for her. And there's plenty of 
people. We have Ashton Broadbank, who Jen Rockwood strategically put on the field to kind of get her feet wet in tournament play, it seems like, because they're not going to have Olivia Wade next year playing that holding mid position. So, uh, again, I'm just excited to see where this team goes. This season is far exceeded my expectations for this. And I think a lot like women's soccer's expectation for this group was pretty low. They weren't ranked at all going into the season. Not they Were they ranked seventh in conference in the beginning? Normally they're at least top yeah. three. Yes, and so they did, ended up winning it outright. Exactly. I'm just, I'm almost at a loss for words for how impressed I am for these girls. I mean, my senior season was the season we always refer to as the tough season. And to watch them be able to come back and, and call the radio and travel with the team, it's been such a treat. Coach Rockwood has finished her meeting with the press in the NCAA. She's on her way over to our broadcast location. We're on the opposite side of where she is, so it'll take a minute uh, for for her to get over here. Uh, but we will talk with the head coach of the Cougars coming up in just a few minutes. And I think uh, to your point about how how this team wasn't expected to do a whole lot. Now, not that their expectations weren't high, but the expectations of people on the outside for them was motivation all year long. And boy, did they exceed everybody else's expectations. I don't think they exceeded theirs. This is a team that thought they could make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, and I think that's what makes this disappointing for them It's because they thought this was a good matchup and one that they should win. Absolutely, and there's a new staff here as well. Jen Rockwood talked about how she was awarded WCC Coach of the Year and how really that is an award that reflects the staff of the year. Steve Magleby and Brent Anderson have come together with this young group and really pulled through. And I think one of the biggest things that is the difference between this year's team and last year's team is their ability to possess out of the back and find the holding midfield's feet, Olivia Wade, and to find the attacking midfielder's feet and adjust appropriately through the through the attack. The first game I called was against Gonzaga, playing against a team who to- is coached by a uh, Coach Watkins who coached at U- or BYU for over 20 years and he could not contain that team because of the way that they possess so well and I think that that's just a tribute to that award that Jen was was given that staff of the the year award yeah the staff of the year which she called that uh, she wants to make sure that the entire staff gets credit for that Uh, she was not the only BYU Cougar receiving postseason accolades sophomore Michaela Michaela Coulihan and junior Elise Flake were named to the all WCC first team Alyssa Jefferson and Rachel Lyman earned all WCC second team honors honorable mention listed uh, Sabrina Davis and freshman Olivia Wade Bella Felino also joined Wade on the all WCC freshman team so this is a team that was recognized for how good they were, and rightfully so. This was a very good soccer team, and they were rewarded for it. Unfortunately, the season came to an end in the first round of the tourney. Yep, a couple of interesting mistakes that we haven't really seen that often. Just a little bit of a nightmare for the the BYU back line because they've, they've just been so solid. Jen Rockwood making her way into our broadcast location as we speak. Having to say hi to some alumni. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Hey, there were a lot of alumni here to be able to say hi to. That was, I mean, and I don't know why we're ever surprised with this. This is what BYU fans do. They show up and support their programs, and tonight was certainly uh, no different. The head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood, joining us. Our post-game coaches interview brought to you by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Coach, I know it's a bummer that the season comes to an end tonight. Before we get big picture, just your overall thoughts on this game tonight. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm kind of speechless because we played one of the best halves of the year in the first half and played an amazing 45 minutes, came out and did exactly what we wanted to do. We set the tone. We dictated the tempo. Uh, we, we owned the width. I thought it's the attack. We were fantastic. You know, we, we obviously probably should have put another goal away when we had a chance to go up 2-0 and, you know, second half, I'm not sure, you know, what happened. Um, TC came out a little stronger, a lot more physical with a lot more energy, and we kind of didn't counter to that. And uh, soccer's crazy, you know, what, less than five-minute span, we gave up two goals, and, and that's going to get you every time. And even though we struggled in the second half, we, we still had – several looks several opportunities and you know we needed someone to really step up and show some leadership out there and we just didn't see it in the second half it was obviously disappointing i 
proud of what this team has accomplished and how well they've played. And uh, wow, you know, I just feel like we can compete with anyone, and and it's, it's disappointing to go out in the first round. When you look at this game tonight, and to your point, you were talking about how the second half was completely different. You played such a great first 45. It has been BYU's M.O. that they come out and are the aggressive team in the second half, and tonight it was it was reversed in that first 10 minutes. It seemed like once they tied it up, there was just this added emotion that TCU was playing with, that, and immediately they scored the second goal. Yeah, um, that, that's, what, that's what happens. Momentum shifts uh, quickly. Confidence and attitude shifts quickly, and they came out with something to prove. I mean, they're at home, and uh, they fought a little harder than we did. And they uh, captured the momentum in those first 10 minutes after we had just come off the field uh, just really playing well. So that's something we've got to work on. I, I don't feel like the, the girls in general kind of as a team and as a unit out there, uh, you know, talked and communicated and said, hey, let's go get this. And uh, it, it can happen fast, you know, especially in soccer. And even with that, I, you know, we made some changes towards the end and pushed some people up and created a couple good looks and good opportunities and thought we were going to tie the game back up. We had them on their heels. Um, but you've know, you got to give a lot of credit to TC. They came out and did what they needed to do in the second half. It's important to remember that although this half didn't look like the BYU team we've seen typically in the second half, that these girls have – have worked really hard to create a more of a first half presence and they did that today Mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that Uh, you know yeah I mean we we have on the road uh, for the last four or five games you know we we have struggled uh, to get off to the start we wanted and we turned it around the second half and we've proven over the season to to be a second half team as far as our our goal score and I think we've scored three times as many goals in the second half which is oh I think when we went in there we were maybe a little I don't know if we were too confident or what happened but we got a little too rattled and emotionally and mentally we've got to learn to be a little stronger uh, hopefully this is a good lesson for us to learn we've got a lot of the group coming back next year and hopefully it motivates us but really proud of this team and the way that we fought to get back uh, where we wanted to be this season had a tremendous amount of success won a conference championship got ourselves back in the rankings back into the tournament and uh you know it's it's always hard to to go out of the tournament no matter what round you're at because you don't want the season to end but again particularly hard with this group because we're playing such great soccer right now and uh you know we just can hope that we like i said learn from this lesson and and motivate us to get back and win another championship and get back to the tournament and get past the first round well, the good thing is it's not going to be long, and we're going to be talking about next year's team getting back out on there. Uh, thank you so much, not only for your time tonight, but your time throughout the entire season. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on a really fun season. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure to be part of uh, broadcasting these games. Thanks, guys. We're fortunate to have you and, and Greg back at home, too, and, and all that you guys do for us and the exposure. And Cougar Nation was great. Not many teams on the road can be chanting BYU like uh, – our fans did. We, we wish we could have had a better result for them. But, again, the girls have had a great season, and we'll regroup and, and get ready for the following year. There we go. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, that's going to do it for our broadcast from Fort Worth, Texas. For everybody involved in the broadcast, Cole Wissinger in our BYU Radio Studios. From a broadcast partner, Avery Walker, my name is Jason Shepard. The final from Fort Worth, Texas, TCU defeats BYU 2-1. to one. We'll talk to you next season. You've heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Go Cougars. You have been listening to live coverage of BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Coverage of today's match has been brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward, Sagicor Life Insurance Company, wise financial thinking for life, Smith's, low prices, market fresh at Smith's, Wilner and O'Reilly, immigration solutions in Utah and abroad at wilneroreilly.com, and by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. BYU Women's Soccer is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Matt Richardson, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and General Manager of Corporate Sponsorships, Casey Stoffer. BYU Women's Soccer is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.